Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to historical facts that mess with your sense of time. I don't know what this is sort of coming under. Maybe it's sort of just the fact that a lot of things that have happened have happened a lot like more recently in human history than you can sort of comprehend. Like, for example, the World Wars were... The First World War was 100 years ago, just over 100 years ago. And in terms of like years for us, it feels like a long time. But in the grand scheme of things, it's... 1% of human history. I mean, I don't know the maths, but it's, I'm just sort of making an example, which makes it seem a lot more crazy. Maybe stuff like that. But yeah, we're going to check this out. Also, I am losing my voice. So if it's noticeable, to be fair, it's not really happening. But sometimes when I'm speaking, it will just go a bit all over the place. So yeah, I'm losing my voice. So maybe throughout the videos today, you'll notice it more and more that my voice is going like that there. But yeah, we're going to check this out. Links are also in the description to my Patreon where you can see reactions to stuff that I can't post to YouTube because YouTube blocked them and stuff. Movie reactions, TV series reactions, all that good stuff. Links are there. But let's check this out and see some of these facts, I guess. Um, I've never reacted to this channel before, so I hopefully, hopefully I enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, links will be in the description to this channel as well. So yeah, let's check this out. When we try to put historical events into perspective, we often simplistically divide things into old days and modern times because our brains can often struggle with the perception of time. <coughs> I compiled a series of interesting facts on historical events that surprisingly took place at more or less the same time, turning them okay. into real and pretty fascinating coincidences, and will make you think twice about how you perceive the past. Number one, the same tortoise belonged to both Charles Darwin and Steve Irwin. Harriet the tortoise was reportedly- What? Wait, they own the same tortoise? was what he collected by charles darwin during his 1835 visit to the galapagos islands as part of his round the world survey expedition then transported to england and then brought to her final home australia by a retiring captain of the beagle the ship darwin used for his expedition and as we all know tortoises can live quite a long time and by a hilarious turn of events harriet turned up in steve Irwin's zoo that wow is that factual? Do they know that for a fact? Because that is crazy. Imagine that you've lived in the same world as Charles Darwin and then you've you've met, or I say you've met, you've lived, in, not lived in the same world, you've been in the presence of Charles Darwin and then Steve Irwin, complete opposite ends of the spectrum, but just two iconic people in their own craft, you know? That's right. The pet tortoise of Charles Darwin was adopted by the legendary crocodile hunter. Wow. However, some doubt was cast on this story by the fact that Darwin had never visited the island that Harriet originally came from. Anyhow, she had an estimated age of 175 by the time- Wait, they can live to 175? I thought it was like 120s, 130s max. Flipping out. ...time she finally died at Steve Irwin's zoo. Number two, today's oldest living tree was already 1,000 years old when the last woolly mammoth died. The world's what? oldest tree is a Great Basin bristlecone pine located in White Mountains, California. I swear when it comes to like oldest trees or biggest trees, they're always in California. They're just, it's just a tree state. It just loves a tree. A tree story. Finding out anything about a tree, it will be in California. And is dated at around 5,000 years old. To put that into perspective, isolated populations of woolly mammoths on Wrangell Island didn't finally go extinct until 4,000 years ago. With the small island in the Arctic Ocean serving as a sanctuary for the great beasts after they were forced from the mainland by humans and climate change. Number three, Sad. woolly mammoths were still alive while Egyptians were building the pyramids. I think this fact is more popular nowadays, but I still. Wow. Well, I mean, I, I don't think they'd be in the same area, so you wouldn't have woolly mammoths walking around near the near the pyramids because of. I mean, they just like the cold and stuff, but it's kind of crazy to comprehend that. People want to include it, since it's a true classic. Scientists have determined that woolly mammoths were still roaming the Earth until about 1650 BC. Meanwhile, the oldest of the Great Pyramids in Egypt, the Pyramid of Djoser, was constructed between 2630 BC and 2611 BC, meaning that while man was busy building some of the most incredible structures ever made, woolly mammoths were still doing their thing. Damn. Number four. Mahatma Gandhi and Jack the Ripper. Gandhi is This is not around the same time. ...is so bound up with the titanic events of the 20th century that it might be peculiar to imagine him as a dapper gentleman of Victorian society, but that's exactly what he became while studying law in London. 
Arriving in September 1888, right in the midst of the Jack the Ripper killings, wow. Gandhi obviously had nothing to do with the Jack the Ripper killings, but it's funny to think about the fact that Gandhi could have become a suspect in the most famous murder case. <laughs> what Number the five, hell? Nintendo was founded when Jack the Ripper was still on the loose. Was Nintendo like founded as a completely different entity though, before it was like whole gaming, like they make gaming stuff and all that? Maybe it was created as like a food manufacturer or something, I don't know. Even though Jack the Ripper and Nintendo were around during the same time, he never got the chance to play classics like Zelda and Mario. They originally made playing cards called Hanafuda, oh. and the company was founded way back in 1889 when the infamous Jack the Ripper was creating havoc on the streets of London. His murder spree happened only about a year before Nintendo came into existence. Why was he changing his accent? I'm so confused. Number six, Star Wars came out the same year as the last guillotine execution in France. Damn. When thinking about guillotine executions, our minds wander to historic figures like Napoleon. But this form of execution isn't that old. Star Wars premiered in the United... Has his accent just changed in the video? Is it a different person? I'm so confused now. It states on May 25th, 1977. At the same time, this futuristic sci-fi was wowing audiences around the world. The medieval practice of death by guillotine was still taking place in France, where Hamid... This fact I'm listening to, right? But I'm, I'm just confused. My ears are very confused. He's just gone from English to American to English. What has just happened? Hamida pimp killer Jandubi was beheaded for the torture and murder of a young woman. This was the last use of the guillotine in France. Nobody else has been executed using any means since. So technically, it is possible that people were talking about the upcoming Star Wars movie while watching the last guillotine execution. Number seven, you could take the London Underground to the last public hanging in the UK. We continue on with the topic of public executions, but we travel to Britain. Hanging used to be a common punishment in the UK and wasn't abolished until 1868. Michael Barrett was the last to be executed in this manner in Newgate Prison, London, in front of a large crowd of people. Five years earlier in 1863... Don't say the underground was made in 1863. The first journey of the London Underground took place. What? The underground was opened in... Eight, it was the first... Whatever. Five years previous. I know it's the oldest underground system, but that is crazy. What the hell? With a station in operation close by the Newgate prison, it is entirely feasible that many Londoners would take the tube to go and watch somebody get hanged. What a very convenient situation. <laughs> wow. Number eight. Prisoners arrived at Auschwitz just days after McDonald's was founded. While McDonald's is Damn. traditionally associated with the good times and affluence of 1950s America, the very first restaurant was opened much earlier, on May 15, 1940. At the same time, one of the most gruesome events in human history began in Europe. Just five days after McDonald's grand opening, the first prisoners arrived at the Auschwitz concentration camp in what is now Poland. Number nine, the fax machine was invented. What is happening? Is this what is, I'm so confused. <laughs> He's just gone American again. Fax machine was invented. The same year the first wagon crossed the Oregon Trail. We all know the story of the Oregon Trail since it's an important part of American history. However, what many don't know is that at the same time the first wagon traversed this trail, an important technological milestone was achieved. The original fax machine, the electric printing telegraph, was patented in 1843. The fax machine in 1843, right, my head is gone. By Scottish inventor Alexander Bain. The same year that about 1,000 people set off west for Oregon, forming a huge wagon train. Number 10. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. What? The Aztec Empire began as an alliance of three <coughs> Nahua Altapetl city-states. These three city-states ruled the area in and around the Valley of Mexico from 1428 until the combined forces of the Spanish conquistadors and their native allies under Hernán Cortés defeated them in 1521. Aztec culture had rich and complex mythological and religious traditions, as well as achieving remarkable architectural and artistic accomplishments. I remember learning about the Aztecs when I was like nine, ten years old. And I remember my grandparents, they gave me like, they had loads of books on it and I took it into school and stuff. That was a long time ago though. I don't think I remember much about learning about the Aztecs, but I do remember doing it at like eight, nine years old. Meanwhile, in England, Oxford University was already well established. It has Crazy. no known date of foundation, 
but there is evidence of teaching as far back as 1096, making it the oldest university in the English-speaking world. Oh, so there's, there's universities that go further back that aren't in the English-speaking world. What? I mean, that's still crazy, though. That is wild to think about. And the world's second oldest university in continuous operation. It grew rapidly from 1167 when Henry II banned English students from attending the University of Paris. Number wow. 11. Harvard University didn't offer calculus classes for the first few years after the school was established. Modern calculus was developed in 17th century Europe by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who independently of each other, first published their findings around the same time. But elements of it appeared in ancient Greece, then in China and the Middle East, and still later again in medieval Europe and in India. Harvard was established in 1636 and is the... Harvard's as old as I thought, uh, older than I thought it would be as well. United States' oldest institution of higher learning, and its history, influence, and wealth have made it one of the world's most prestigious universities. It's crazy to think that like these universities, just they've been going on for so long. 1636, you got the Oxford University, which goes to the 1100s. Like that is insane to think about. What the hell, man? It's flipping wild and now that obviously the these are the biggest universities in the world and i can i guess i can understand that because there's so much history there so they've got this just i guess this um uh, what's it called just people know about it i can't think of the word but it's got this history that adds to all, the already i guess high level of like education and stuff Calculus was off the curriculum for the first few years for obvious reasons. It hadn't been recognised yet. I find it astonishing that the oldest university in the United States is even older than such an important scientific breakthrough. That's true. Number 12. Ecstasy was invented the same year the Titanic sank. The unsinkable Damn. Titanic sank in 1912, going down in the North Atlantic Ocean, four days into the ship's maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City. In the same year, pharmaceutical giant Merck was interested in developing substances that stopped abnormal bleeding, and one of its chemists, Anton Kollisch, synthesized MDMA to avoid a patent by German rival Bayer. The drug was of no particular interest to Merck at the time, and they only came back to research the substance sporadically over the next few years. It wasn't until 1975 that psychoactive effects of the drug began to be taken seriously and recreational use spread thereafter through personal networks of psychotherapists, psychiatrists, users wow. of psychedelics, and yuppies. So yes, so psychiatrists are the ones that <laughs> spread it around to what it is now. Everyone who died on the Titanic never got the chance to taste this drug. <laughs> Number 13, Microsoft was founded while Spain was still a fascist dictatorship. A Damn. highly controversial figure within Spain, Franco is seen as a divisive leader. Supporters credit his strong anti-communist and nationalist views, economic policies, preservation of traditional Spanish practices, and support of the monarchy of Spain as positive influences over the nation. Critics disparage him as an autocratic dictator who violently suppressed opposition and dissent, banned culture seen as non-Spanish, used concentration camps and forced labor and provided much support to the Axis powers during World War II. Franco ruled Spain as a fascist state up until his death in 1975, aged 82. This was the same year that Microsoft was founded by Paul Allen and Bill Gates and the beginning of a new era in computer technology. Number Damn. 14, artist Pablo... Has the video got like, a lot quieter? My voice is really going now. I think it's got a lot quieter. If it gets loud again, I, I apologise. I'm turning the sound up a bit because it's gone a bit quiet. Picasso died in 1973, the same year. Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon was released. What? Wait, Picasso? I thought he was like around the time of like Shakespeare and stuff. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Pablo Picasso is regarded as one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. Among his most famous works are the... Pro Bro, I literally thought he was from... Oh my day. I did not know he was from the, 19 the 20th century. What? Proto-Cubist Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, 1907, and Guernica, 1937. A dramatic portrayal of the bombing of Guernica by the German and Italian air forces during the Spanish Civil War. Unlike some other great artists who died young, Picasso lived a long and full life until he passed away in 1973, which was, coincidentally, the same year that one of the most groundbreaking and progressive albums ever was released, <coughs> Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. 
With an estimated 45 million copies sold, it is Pink Floyd's most successful album and one of the best-selling worldwide. It has been remastered and re-released several times and covered in its entirety by several acts. It produced two singles, Money and Us and Them, and is often regarded as one of the greatest albums of all time. I would love to play you some pieces of this album. Definitely the most iconic cover for an album, for sure. But that would most likely end with the takedown of this video. But let's be real, if anyone here doesn't know Dark Side of the Moon, you are more in need of a lesson in culture than in history. And finally, number 15. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was published in the summer of 2007, the same summer the first iPhone model was released. Wow. The seventh and last book in the Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, was released in 2007, ending the series that began in 1997 with the publication of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. That same year, something came along that has probably done more to kill children's interest in reading more than anything else. <laughs> the first iPhone. Good point. Considering that the first iPhone seems like a vintage phone now, it's impressive how fast time goes by. And that's God, the iPhone button in the middle, like with the square or whatever. God, it's changed so much, man. That's exactly why I included this fact on this list. That was almost 20 years ago, and at least to me, this really feels like another era. But that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed I enjoyed this, you know what? This is a cool little like look into just how I guess historical facts that mess with your sense of time because like that Picasso one, bro. I, I this is just me being dumb, obviously, but I thought Picasso was around Shakespeare's time, maybe a bit after. But I didn't realize. Wait, what the? F so there's pictures of Picasso. Picasso in 1973. Damn. That is actually, that surprised me. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction and let me know your thoughts on this. And yeah, until next time, peace.